I'm always struck by how many of Jesus's interactions with his disciples and with others center around the sharing of food. Obviously there's the Last Supper, uh, the feeding of the 5,000, but also all of those occasions where Jesus ate with sinners, tax collectors uh, and Pharisees too. And actually we saw that in yesterday's reading as well. If you read all of the detail when Jesus appeared to his disciples, part of the proof to them that he has risen was that he ate a piece of broiled fish. I actually had to look that up. It doesn't sound particularly appetising. Apparently it just means sort of barbecued, which makes it sound better. Uh, and in today's reading, we've got him dining with his friends again. In Acts chapter 1 verse 4, it literally says, On one occasion, while Jesus was eating with them. I don't know what uh, family mealtime looks like in your household. I'd love to tell you that in the Vicarage family, it's a combination of shared prayer requests and answers to prayer. Uh, also maybe a, a short time of family catechism and Bible study. Actually, more realistically, it's a combination of squabbling, uh, shared stories, uh, a bit of teasing and also laughter mixed in. Well, on this occasion, Jesus tries to raise a theological topic of conversation with his disciples. He says to them again that they are to wait in Jerusalem for the gift of the Holy Spirit and that then they will be his witnesses. And in the midst of this, and quite reassuringly, uh, Peter asks an entirely worldly question. He says, well, is this the occasion when you are going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Is Jesus teaching theology? And Peter's mind has turned to politics, to nationalism, uh, maybe uh, economics and culture. Is this the point when life uh, for the people of Israel is going to get better, Jesus? I wonder if, like me, you've been uh, noticing the number of uh, opinion pieces that have arrived uh, telling us how life might be different after our coronavirus isolation and the impact of lockdown. Some of those things might be positive, an improved environment, a radical challenge to our global economy, a need to address issues uh, of uh, difference and also exploitation a need to redress some of the balances in society. I even uh, noticed one uh, Christian speaking saying it was almost a metaphor for the resurrection, that we should look forward and hope for uh, a new world that might come afterwards. I think that opinion like Peter's actually misses the point. Just like yesterday, where Jesus's point was that his followers needed to receive spiritual power, what Peter needs to realise uh, is that Jesus's rule will be over a spiritual kingdom. So the role and impact of the Holy Spirit will be to make those that recognise and know Jesus into witnesses in order that others might allow the kingdom of God to come in their hearts and in their minds. Uh, Jesus then ascends into heaven and the explanation has to be given to Peter and the others by angels. They say to them, that just as Jesus has gone into heaven, so one day he will come back in the same way that they have seen him go. A restored kingdom will come when Jesus returns. Until that point, we have a great and exciting task, uh, not primarily to work for the restoration of society, controversial as that might sound. Our primary task as Christians is to be witnesses to the power and impact of Jesus Christ, to see a spiritual kingdom come in people's hearts. Part of the way we do that is absolutely to work for the betterment of the world around. But we are given spiritual power that a spiritual kingdom would come within people's hearts and minds. Let me pray for us to that effect. Lord Jesus, let our hearts and minds be set towards the point when you will return and your kingdom will come and it will be seen in all its glory. Until that day does take place, let us be your witnesses through word and through deed uh, to the glories of your death and resurrection. Amen.